Not all plastics are created equal, and using the wrong one is guaranteed to lead to some disappointment. In today's video, we're talking about daily use versus specialized filaments, and how different materials behave, and which ones you might want to use to ensure that your 3D prints work the way you intended, no matter how ambitious your project might be. On one side, you've got your everyday plastic. These are the filaments that get the job done 90% of the time, without making you want to chuck your printer into the trash. We're talking PLA. It's super forgiving, relatively inexpensive, and ready to roll for prototypes, desk organizers, or that fidget toy your kid's been begging you for. Then there's the exotic side of 3D printing. These are the specialized filaments that unlock next level stuff, like parts that stand up in the face of heat, flex like rubber, or take a beating without flinching. Think nylon for tough, rigid parts, TPU for grippy phone cases, chemical resistant gaskets, and super durable parts with a little bit of flexibility, or carbon fiber reinforced blends for drone frames that are lightweight and durable. The big question is, when do you stick with the basics and when do you level up? Well, it all boils down to your project. If it's just for looks or low stress prints, PLA is your best friend. But if it's gotta survive real world exposure, like outdoor use, heavy loads, or exposure to chemicals, it might be time to go with an engineering grade filament. For the purposes of this video, I'll use the term engineering filaments to talk about anything stronger than PLA and PETG. First up is the king of beginners, PLA. It's super easy to print, no enclosure is needed, Prints around 215 degrees Celsius and is partly made from cornstarch or sugar cane. Sometimes it even smells like popcorn, although I wouldn't recommend sticking your nose right up to it because after all, it is still melted plastic and this should go without saying, but definitely don't eat it. PLA is usually the first filament that most people start with due to its ease of use, wide variety of color options, and it's the most cost effective on the market with some brands costing less than $10 a spool. It's rigid, prints with much higher fan speeds than other filaments, leading to a better cooled print, and produces a really nice looking part. PLA is great for things like toys, fidget spinners, desk organizers, and even small shelves or stands that don't hold a lot of weight like the ones holding up my label printer. But don't load it up to the max or apply too much force to it, or you might find it start to flex or bow over time. PLA also isn't great in the heat, so try to keep it indoors and away from flames. I wouldn't recommend sticking it above the fireplace during the holidays, and definitely don't leave it in your car on a hot summer day. PLA also isn't great for outdoor use and usually doesn't have any UV resistance, so if the heat doesn't get to it first, the sun's UV radiation certainly will, leading to bleaching and color loss. As long as it's not carrying any weight, it should be okay for shorter periods of time, but if you were gonna make something like a hanger for an outdoor planter or a birdhouse, ASA or PETG would be a better option. If PLA is the reliable sedan, think of PETG, or glycol modified PET, as the tough SUV. PET is what most plastic water bottles are made out of, but PETG has a stronger impact resistance and is known to be tougher than its unmodified counterpart and engineered to print better with the addition of glycol. Although you can still buy regular PET filament without the addition of glycol if you are looking for a more rigid filament. Prints a bit hotter than PLA, between 230 and 250 degrees Celsius, and typically prefers a 70 to 80 degree bed temperature. It's got that sweet spot of durability and ease of use, plus no enclosure is needed and no harsh fumes like you'd experience with ABS. It has a higher temperature resistance than PLA, up to 80 degrees Celsius, and is more chemical resistant, plus it's got some flex to it so it doesn't just snap like PLA might. PETG is perfect for functional everyday parts like tool holders, shelf brackets, outdoor planners, and even food safe containers if you get a food safe approved filament. It should be noted though that even though there are filaments that are approved for direct contact with food, unless the part is coated in a food safe epoxy or you fill in the layer lines, there's always the risk of bacterial growth forming within the layer lines, no matter how small they might seem to the naked eye. And here's a pro tip. Always dry your PETG filament before use. It's hygroscopic, meaning that it sucks up moisture like a sponge and can string like crazy if it's wet. And apart from the stringing, wet filament in general can cause bubbles to form within the filament as it's fed through the hot nozzle, leading to less than ideal quality in your prints. Throw it in a filament dryer for six to eight hours at 50 degrees Celsius and you should be good to go. And then there's HTPLA or high temp PLA. It's a relatively new product from Polymaker. Think of it as PLA's hotter cousin, hitting 100 degrees Celsius without softening. It prints like regular PLA, but it's able to withstand heat even more so than PETG. HTPLA is great for under the hood prototypes, outdoor planters, tool mounts, or even kitchen gadgets like a lid holder for your pots and pans while cooking. Between PLA and PETG, they'll have no issue handling 90% of your prints, but for the rest, we gotta go beyond the basics. 
Beyond the basics, we have ABS, ASA, and nylons. And beyond those are even more durable filaments like PPA carbon fiber, which is in the nylon family and has metal-like properties, although we won't be diving into that material in today's video, but I will leave a link to it in the description below if you wanna go check it out on your own. Now these specialized filaments aren't messing around. They're for when your print has to perform and not just look pretty. We're talking increased strength, flexibility, and resistance that everyday projects demand. But just a heads up, they do cost more, they're trickier to print, and you might need to tweak your setup a little bit if you're in an enclosed area like a bedroom or if you have a printer without an enclosure or filtration. And before we move on to some of the more advanced filaments, I wanna take a quick minute to tell you about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB manufacturing, CNC machining, 3D printing, and so much more. Have a project in mind, but don't have the capabilities to manufacture it in-house? Upload your design to PCBWay.com, choose your material and manufacturing method, and get a free instant quote within minutes. Also be sure to check out PCBWay's 8th Design Contest. This year's competition features three exciting themes, electronics, mechanical, and AIoT. Projects must be submitted by January 31st, 2026 for a chance to win up to $1,500 in cold hard cash. Official rules and timelines are available at the link in the description below. And thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Now let's check out some of the engineering grade filaments. First, let's talk about ABS. ABS prints a little bit hotter than PETG, usually between 240 and 260 degrees Celsius. It needs a bed temp of around 90 to 100 degrees Celsius and an enclosure to help fight warping and keep the fumes contained and filtered. It's impact resistant, it sounds like a dream for smooth and ready to paint finishes, and it can even be vapor smooth using acetone for injection molded like finishes. The acetone vapors dissolve the surface layer of the 3D printed part, smoothing out layer lines as it rehardens. ABS is perfect for automotive parts that are in hotter environments or for enclosures that hold electronic components. You can even pick up a UL approved FR ABS or fire retardant ABS, which has self extinguishing properties, which is perfect for electrical boxes. But it is gonna cost you quite a bit more than a standard ABS. Like I mentioned before, it's a fumy filament and produces harmful VOCs, so it definitely requires some ventilation, filters, and an enclosure. And while ABS is technically UV resistant, it can start to yellow or degrade over time if it's left outdoors. So for more prolonged outdoor exposure, go with an ASA. ASA has properties very similar to ABS, so much so that these two filaments are sometimes grouped together as ABS and ASA. It's a bit trickier to print in my experience, but offers slightly more heat resistance and chemical resistance when compared to ABS. ASA can also be acetone smooth like ABS. It's great for outdoor prints such as birdhouses or planter hangers, and it's more UV resistant than ABS. It can also be found in a wider variety of colors. Personally, I usually avoid using ASA for most prints because in my experience, the fumes can be harsher than ABS even with an enclosed machine. Again, all this is from my own use, so your results may vary depending on your setup. Another downside to using ASA over ABS is the cost. ASA is usually more expensive than ABS, so for indoor prints that require durability and strength, ABS is a more cost-effective option. If your print needs strength and is going outdoors, go with ASA. Then we have nylon. It's tough as nails, super durable, semi-flexible, and has insane layer adhesion. But there are some downsides. It absorbs moisture like nobody's business, so dry it religiously. Nylon typically should be dried for at least six hours around 80 to 100 degrees Celsius if you have a dryer capable of hitting higher temperatures, such as the E2 filler dryer from Sunlu. And it's my recommendation to keep drying it at a slightly lower temperature while you're printing, especially if you're in a more humid or rainy environment. If you have a filament dryer, but it won't quite reach the recommended 80 to 100 Celsius, I have found you can get away with drying it for eight to 12 hours at 70 degrees Celsius. Oh, and let's not forget about TPU, the king of flexiness. Hardness levels range from 85A, which is a softer version, up to 95A, which is much more rigid, but still flexible. TPU prints much slower than the other filaments, typically around 70 to 100 millimeters per second, and I find a printing temperature of 230 to 240 degrees Celsius to work great. TPU can also be printed in an open frame printer like the A1 series from Bamboo or Flashforge's Adventurer machines, and only needs a bed temp of around 40 degrees Celsius. Just keep in mind that TPU sticks really well to PEI, so depending on the surface area that is in contact with the build plate, it might be difficult to remove the part once it's cooled. So try to get it off the build plate sooner rather than later. I would also recommend a chamfer on the underside of the print if possible, just to make it a little easier to lift up on the part or even to get a scraper underneath. Just be careful not to damage the build plate in the process. 
TPU is great for gaskets, grips, or soft robot parts. And like nylon, it's chemical resistant, so it can withstand things such as oil, gasoline, even certain brake fluids. Just make sure you do your research. TPU also bonds to itself extremely well during the printing process, which means it's nearly impossible to break it at the layer lines. Just imagine trying to rip rubber in half. Because of its flexibility, it absorbs impacts like no other filament that I've ever used. And even if you clamp it up in a vise, once it's released from the vise, it'll go back to its original shape. Softer variants of TPU are even being used to create footwear that is entirely 3D printed. Engineering filaments demand more than the everyday PLA and PETG, like enclosures for temp stability, dry boxes for filament storage, and sometimes a little extra patience to dial in the settings just right. If you're printing with something like bamboo filament in a bamboo machine, that can take some of the guesswork out of the equation. Unfortunately for me, when I was first getting started, I was using filament from a different brand, so I ended up running calibrations on all of them to get good results. They aren't perfect and could be tuned even further, but for functional parts, it works just great. The cost of engineering grade filaments like PA6 and PA12 carbon fiber can often double or triple the more basic filaments, but for parts requiring more strength, they can be complete game changers. Start simple with PLA or PETG and level up as projects demands. Just remember that nylon often costs two to three times as much as PLA and PETG, so print and iterate with the basics to save some money. For the prototypes, just to make sure the design works, PLA is the cheapest solution. Once the design is dialed in and works as it should, level up and move to the more advanced filaments as needed. What's your favorite filament to use? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the next upload. Ready to start your next project? Check out PCBWay, linked down in the description below.